Hi, my name is Tim, and in this video, I'm going to guide you through the proper troubleshooting procedure to diagnose a faulty indoor fan motor run capacitor. Now, to begin with, we need to make sure that the thermostat's calling for cooling. So we're going to click the selector switch here. This will not only turn it to the cool position, it'll also turn down the temperature setting. Now that the thermostat's calling for cooling, we're going to click OK on the procedure guide. And we're going to take a brief inventory of which electrical loads are running. And we can see here that our indoor fan motor is not operational. It's not running. These arrows would be spinning, and you'd be able to hear it if you have speakers. So we're going to click no that the indoor fan's not running. We're going to proceed to the outdoor unit. Once there, we can see that the compressor as well as the condenser fan motor are both operational. So the outdoor unit's working just fine. Um, we have no operation of the indoor fan motor. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide that we verified those two motors are on. Now, before we make any voltage checks here, we're going to pull out the wiring diagram here by clicking on the bottom left. Now, using the diagram, we're going to come up with a list of possible causes of this malfunction. Well, the source of the problem is that the indoor fan motor is not running. So it's possible we have an open winding in the indoor fan motor. It's also a possibility that the indoor fan motor run capacitor located right here in series to the start winding of the motor is faulty. In the low voltage circuit, it's possible that we have a faulty indoor fan relay coil, which if that's faulty, it's not going to pull the contacts in and provide 240 volts to the motor. And it's also a possibility that our thermostat is faulty, meaning the fan switch portion of the thermostat is faulty. Again, the fan switch sends 24 volts out of the G terminal to the indoor fan relay coil. Now again, we know that the cooling contact's closed because the contactor is obviously energized uh, due to the fact that the outdoor unit is on. So now that we're armed with these four possibilities, the indoor fan motor, the indoor fan motor capacitor, the indoor fan relay, or the thermostat fan switch, we're going to take some voltage checks. Now to begin with, we're going to place our leads at the indoor fan relay coil and see if we're getting 24 volts to that coil. And when we place the leads at the glowing orange hotspot, we can see we do, in fact, have 24 volts there. Now, again, I'm going to take the wiring diagram out for just a minute here. And we can see the placement of our leads on the diagram. And we're verifying 24 volts at the coil. So this eliminates the fan switch within the thermostat as a possible malfunction here. Our next step, after clicking yes on the procedure guide that we've measured 24 volts, is to measure for line voltage to the relay. Now the relay has 240 volts coming in on the line side and when the contacts close we should get 240 volts out of the load side to the motor and capacitor. So now that we've verified we've got 240 volts coming into the relay, we're going to check the load side voltage of the relay and verify that the relay is in fact functioning. So again place your meter leads on the glowing orange hotspots. And we do have load side voltage of 240 volts. So now again this eliminates the indoor fan relay as a possible cause here. Again, if you're confused, let's go back to the wiring diagram again. If we look at the placement of our meter leads here on the diagram, we verified voltage at this point. Again, this verifies that these contacts are closed. So now we've narrowed it down to either the indoor fan motor or the capacitor. So click yes on the procedure guide. And our next step is to turn the power off. We're gonna have to measure resistance and capacitance here, and we can't do that with the power on. Now our next step is to discharge the capacitor. Now this is an important safety consideration. Always be sure to discharge a capacitor prior to disconnecting the wires from it. Now this has already been done for us in the simulator, so our next step is to click on the capacitor and disconnect the wires so that we can isolate both the capacitor and the motor windings. So we're gonna click isolate on the menu and you'll see this disconnects the wires from the motor and the capacitor. Click OK on the procedure guide, and our next step is to measure the capacitance or microfarad value of the capacitor. Now, this particular microfarad rating is 9 microfarads. We're going to place our meter leads at the capacitor terminals and see if we get our 9 microfarads, plus or minus 10% of that value. And if we see here, we've got 0 microfarads. This indicates that we have a faulty run capacitor here, and this is what's not allowing the blower motor to operate. So we've kind of solved the problem here. So we're going to click no on the procedure guide. And our next step is to replace the capacitor. So simply click on it, click replace on the menu. And don't forget to reconnect all the connections properly and verify for any loose connections. Click OK on the procedure guide. And we need to turn the power back on now. 
Now, after turning the power back on, I recommend you watch one full cycle of operation to make sure all the loads are functioning properly. You may want to pull the filter and check it for cleanliness, replace it as necessary. Again, this gives the customer a little added value on the service call. Click OK on the procedure guide. And now we can go up to the space and verify that cold air is being received through this ceiling diffuser. And we can, we can see from the graphic here that in fact it is. Now, if you're unclear on any of these steps we took, click the top left icon and you can review each step in this diagnostic procedure. Good luck on all your service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.